What's going on? It's your girl Tina and I am back with another Black History 365 presentation. So as you can tell by the image, today's presentation is on Harriet Tubman and she was born in 1820 in Dorchester County, Maryland as Araminta Ross. At the age of five, she was rented to families to do domestic chores like housekeeping, splitting fence rails, and nursing children. At that age, she was also often sent home sick and beaten by displeased employers. And then at the age of 15 years old, she was caught in the middle of a confrontation between a slave owner and a man that was escaping slavery. And the overseer to stop the escape, he threw a two pound lead weight that hit her in the head and she stayed in a coma for weeks and was left with a permanent scar on her forehead. Also, as a result of the hit, she had what was known as sleep fits, where she would fall asleep randomly, and she would also have strange dreams. She then married a free black man, and she found out that her mother's previous slave owner had freed her mom, but never told her. Then Harriet was advised that her case would not be heard in court because of all the time that had passed, so she held her slave status. In 1849, her husband threatened to sell her down south, or as they called it, down the river, and so she left him and she went to Philadelphia. In 1850, the Fugitive Slave Law was passed, and this meant that if a white person testified against a black person, that they would be sent back down south and they would become a slave despite of their current status. All right, and then um, she started visiting the Philadelphia Vigilance Committee that was established to assist fugitive slaves. And this was where her first escape was planned. The first escape planned was for her own sister and her sister's kids, but she didn't know this until after she met them. Then she left Philadelphia and she went to Catherine's Canada, which was a small city that was home to many fugitive slaves. And from there, from 1851 to 1857, she made two trips a year to the South to free slaves from slavery. In 1857, she helped her elderly parents escape slavery. And then her last trip was in 1860. Then she helped John Brown raid Harper's Ferry along with Frederick Douglass and she she was not able to join the raid but she assisted with the planning of it. She didn't join the raid because she became ill. In 1862 the Union Army called for her assistance and she traveled to Beaufort, South Carolina to be a nurse and teacher to many of the Gullah families that were abandoned by their slave owners on South Carolina's Sea Islands. In the spring of 1863, she organized a scouting service of black men to obtain strategic information from enemy territories. And then she also led the Combahee River Expedition in July of 1863. So Harriet Tubman was described as the first and possibly the last woman to lead U.S. Army troops in battle. All right, so after the war ended, she returned to Auburn, New York, and she continued to care for her parents. In 1869, she married again to a man that she met at South Carolina at a South Carolina Army base. And then she spent years in Auburn where she was writing her autobiography and she was also participating in organizations like the National Association of Colored Women and the National Federation of Afro-American Women. Then she also helped Susan B. Anthony lead the charge in gaining the right for women to vote. And then one of Harriet Tubman's lifelong dreams was to have a home for the poor and disabled. So in 1896, she fulfilled this dream when she purchased 25 acres of land. Okay, so she formally opened the home in 1908 and then in 1911, she became a resident there. 
And then on March the 10th, 1913, she died of pneumonia. All right, so she was never recognized for the service um, to her country. She, she was never given that recognition. But Queen Victoria sent her a silver medal and invited her to visit England. And then also in Macon, Georgia in the 80s, they opened um, the Harriet Tubman Historical and Cultural Museum. And um, here was something that was said um, about Harriet Tubman that I, I really love and I want to share it with you all. So it goes as quoted, as Columbus Sally has written, Harriet Tubman, like no other woman, has come to symbolize the indomitable spirit of blacks in their quest to be against the peculiar institution of slavery with its intent and design to destroy their spiritual essence as human beings all right you guys so i want to thank you all for tuning in and watching um if you all enjoy the presentation please give it a thumbs up also if you enjoy the content on our channel also um, hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell next to the subscribe button so i'm gonna go ahead and end it now but as always until the next video if it ain't excellent it's irrelevant until next time